Welcome to the second part of this section of videos on cancer screening tests. Here I want to talk about what is known as the validity of a screening test, and how this is described in terms of statistics called sensitivity and specificity. It might seem like stating the obvious, but for a test to be useful, it should be able to correctly identify as many people with the condition as possible by a positive result, whilst also identifying those without it with a negative result. The ability of a test to do this is known as its validity. Sensitivity and specificity are statistics that describe the ability of a test to be able to perform these functions. It's important to understand, and I'll reiterate this, that validity is telling us only whether a screening test is good at identifying whether people have the disease or not. It doesn't tell us whether using that test as part of a wider screening program will ultimately be worthwhile. If we look back at the last video where we talked about Wilson and Younger's criteria, for a screening program to be worthwhile, it should fulfill all of the 10 points outlined, of which having a suitable, valid test is only one. But clearly, having a valid test is a very important part of a successful screening program. To help you understand what sensitivity and specificity are, I'm going to take you through steps and then give you an example. Those with the disease who test positive are known as true positives. Those without the disease who test positive are false positives. Those with the disease who test negative are false negatives. And those without the disease who test negative are true negatives. So let's start with sensitivity. Sensitivity is defined as the proportion of people who have the disease who test positive. In other words, out of all the people who have the disease who took the test, what percentage correctly got a positive result? The total number of people with the disease will be the number of true positives, those with the disease who got a positive result, added to the false negatives, those with the disease who test negative. Therefore, the sensitivity which is normally described as a percentage, is calculated by taking the number of people who correctly tested positive and then dividing them by the number of the people who have the disease. A test with high sensitivity will pick up most cases of the disease. A test with low sensitivity may miss some people who have the disease. Specificity, on the other hand, is a measure of how good a test is at identifying what proportion of people who don't have the disease are correctly given a negative result. You can think about it as telling you, out of all the people who don't have the disease, what percentage correctly tested negative. Here in purple, we can see the total number of people without cancer. These are the true negatives added with the false positives. The number of people correctly identified as not having cancer with a negative result, true negative, divided by all of those without the disease, will give us the specificity. A test with high specificity will minimise the number of people who don't have the disease going on to have unnecessary further testing. A test with low specificity will allow lots of people to go on to have further unnecessary investigations. I'll give an example with numbers. In this case, we can imagine we're talking about a screening test for prostate cancer, the PSA blood test. To work out the sensitivity, which is the ability of the test to correctly identify people with the disease, we take the number of people with the disease, true positives and false negatives, which is 23 plus 22, which equals 55, and we divide the number of true positives, 22, by this number. This comes out as 44%. This means 44% of people with the disease will be correctly identified by the test with a positive result. The higher the percentage is, the more sensitive the test is, and the better it is at identifying people who have the disease in question, prostate cancer. A low sensitivity like this, 44%, suggests that the test isn't great at identifying people with the disease, which means lots of people with the disease will get missed with a false negative result and will not go on to have further testing. For specificity, which is the ability of the test to correctly identify people without the disease, here we will take the number of people who don't have the cancer, true negatives, and false positives, 46 plus 4. We then divide the number of true negatives by this to find out what percentage of people without the disease will get a negative result. 
this comes out as 96%. So 96% of people who don't have the disease were correctly identified with a negative result. The remaining 4% got a positive result but didn't have the cancer. A specificity of 96% is pretty good. It means that only a small number of people without the disease will test positive and go on to have unnecessary investigations. To give another example that might help your understanding, I'll talk about a test that anyone who's been through an airport will be familiar with. The purpose of the airport metal detector is to find weapons to stop people taking them onto planes. It's used as a screening test to pick out people who are more likely to be carrying a weapon so that they can go on to have a body search. But the scanner is not a weapon detector, it's a metal detector. It isn't specifically built to detect weapons. Most weapons are made of metal, so it's a reasonable screening test to try and find people carrying them. In airports, scanners tend to be very sensitive. A sensitive scanner will pick up most of the weapons, but it will also pick up other metal objects. It means that it's highly likely that the people carrying dangerous items will get searched, but so will lots of other people carrying non-dangerous metallic items. Someone with no metal would pass through without setting off the scanner. They are an example of a true negative. Someone with a key would set off the scanner. They are an example of a false positive. A guy with the gun will set off the scanner. This is a true positive. Finally, someone with a bell would also set off the scanner. And you might have guessed he will be a false positive. You can also imagine a scenario where someone with a weapon that isn't made out of metal would pass through the scanner without setting it off. This would be a false negative. The airport scanner is an example of a test that is sensitive, but not particularly specific. Its high sensitivity means that it's not likely to miss many people carrying weapons. However, low specificity means that lots of people without weapons will test positive and have to go on to have an unnecessary body search. So in summary, we've learned that validity measures are a way of expressing how good a test is at identifying people both with and without a disease. Validity measures are useful in telling us how good a test is, but they don't tell us if a screening program using this test will be worthwhile. We need to know ultimately whether using a screening test in a program reduces suffering or death related to the disease, and this involves much more than just having a valid test. We'll talk about how we do this in later videos. Sensitivity is the probability that a test will correctly identify people who have the disease with a positive result. A test with high sensitivity will ensure people with the disease aren't missed by a test. Specificity, on the other hand, is the probability that a test will correctly identify people who don't have the disease with a negative result. A test with high specificity will ensure we don't have many people who don't have the disease going on to have unnecessary further testing. Ideally, we'd love to have a test which is both 100% sensitive and specific, but unfortunately, this is impossible. In fact, as we'll see in the next video, sensitivity and specificity are very closely linked and in general, as one increases, the other decreases. This is known as the sensitivity-specificity trade-off, which we'll cover in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Your comments and questions are more than welcome. And if you've enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos.